applied to. Hello everybody and welcome to a new video series on the channel that was inspired by Travis's idea for um, when Eric was evaluating cards. Uh, this is kind of like a learning Arkham Horror the card game series as uh, I can teach new players that are watching. Uh, medium players as well as Eric as we kind of just discuss this card game because there's a lot to it. And I would say that I am qualified to talk about the game at this point in my life. So that's what we're doing. And this one is a side-by-side -side card comparisons for learning Arkham Horror the card game. There's a lot of different reasons for why you might want to look at some cards over other cards. Why cards are like sometimes just like outright better than others. This isn't like the, uh, the evaluation video where it's like there is a rating of bad versus like busted, right? This is more like why you think these cards are different in ways and why you might want to look at playing them, right? That's kind of like the idea we have here. Um, and then also just showcasing while cards, why they might be similar, different spots they fill and why you might be interested in filling those spots. So that's kind of thing. I think we have 10 cards here to talk about today. Uh, so we're going to dive in with our first one, which I think is a very general comparison here. So I know there's four cards on one side. Most of these are going to be one and one, but this I think is actually a very basic um, hurdle to get over in this game. Uh, and that is comparing Unexpected Courage, commits for two wild, max one committed per skill test, versus the four neutral skills, which all commit for two symbols of a skill, brain, book, fist, or foot, uh, only one per committed skill test, like Unexpected Courage, but if it's successful, you draw a card. So, with your knowledge of the game, Eric, why would you think you would want to run one over the other? Like, any of them, they're kind of like, just like, rotating between it. Over Unexpected Courage? Yeah, or Unexpected Courage over the other ones. Like, why? I... So, based on what I've... So, we're we're how many into Dunwich six. now? Six. We just finished the sixth scenario. Six out of eight, right? Out of eight, yeah. Okay. So, I'm like a soft medium player now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like a soft medium. Your beginner... Beginner point one. Beginner point... Yeah. Beginner point, point eight, one. rather, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would run Unexpected Courage over any of these options because drawing one card if successful is great mm -hmm. but unexpected courage is going to be for me a guts or a perception or an overpower or a manual dexterity mm -hmm. when i need it mm -hmm. and the drawing one card is great so it replaces itself which is nice but i feel like with my experience with stella and all yeah. of the wild symbols she has yes. she's so thick with wild symbols yeah um uh that's honestly saved me multiple times in the game not having to be smart i hate to say it but not having to be smart about my deck building yeah yeah not having to make sure that i'm covered for the symbols that i might need and thinking yeah, yeah. about card draw and numbers and stuff like that all right so then on the flip side why would you run one of the symbols like like an overpower guts perception or manual decks over unexpected courage I could see there being a sort of a tempo build where if you know you're... So manual dexterity is the one that sticks out the most for me because I'm most used to evading. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're a character who knows you're going to be evading a lot <clears throat> and you know you're going into a scenario with lots and lots of creatures that are going to mm -hmm. attach onto you, then manual dexterity is a great uh, help me get out, help me knock a creature mm -hmm. down, maybe get some effects going off, and then draw a card back so I'm mm -hmm. not actually falling behind. I could see that being useful. I assume for most of the other cards, that's true as well. Perception, I think, is probably another one I would run. Again, mm -hmm. I've been playing a clue, a, a cluer, yeah, yeah. a cluer, a cluver, yeah, a cluver, yeah. I've been yeah. playing a cluver, and so I could see perception coming in. Uh, I haven't done any fights with overpower, but I imagine with overpower, that would be a nice way to potentially draw into a better card, mm -hmm. uh, while still technically passing your test and mm -hmm. getting yourself into that whatever you were calling it recently, six to one, which is oh, yeah, good. Or just up four. Up, up, four, four, up on, four. Up four on standard difficulty is like where you want to be to pass a test on everything but the auto yeah. fail. Uh, guts, I feel the least positive about, but I'm sure there's decks in there. Uh, maybe when you're casting a spell, mm -hmm. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this, uh, uh, a few things. Um, I think you're generally right that like Unexpected Courage, you would run that over the other ones if you're looking for versatility. Mm -hmm. This is especially important if your stats are very similar. So for example, with Stella, she's three, two, three, four, right? So her stats are kind of like in the middle, which means that Unexpected Courage is just generically fine, right? Gets all of them up to, which is a nice number to be. 
Uh, however, if you look at, for example, in my Mark Harrigan deck, where I'm 3-5, or 3-2-5-3, right? I'm running Overpower because it's the skill I use all the time, yeah. right? Which means Overpower basically doesn't exist in my deck. Because I'm looking at fighting, right? So I'm going to play Overpowers because it's, like, not there, you know? Yeah. It basically means that I have 28 cards in my deck in a way, right? Because I am looking at using it. And the same thing kind of falls for Perception, Guts, and Manual decks. However, it's actually kind of funny because Guts is generally... Um, it's a very safe card to run mm -hmm. all the time. Because uh, the deck tests you the most on brain. Of right? course, yeah. Yeah, yeah that so makes sense. It's, one of the, it's actually, we have in all of our new player guides, we always have to go on a speech every video about why Guts is good. And Guts is good because it's a passive stat. You're not using your brain for anything except defense, right? Mm -hmm. Everything else is an active use outside of the Mystic class, right? So that's why Guts is good because it works for all of them. But why you would want to run one over the other, it really depends on like what your deck is and what your stat line is and what your goal with what you are doing. If you're investigating like every turn, a perception is good because it's basically just not existing in your deck. That right? makes sense. If you're evading a lot, manual dexterity is good because it's not in your deck, right? Yeah. And guts is good because it's also if you're using your brain a lot, but it's also kind of just helps you pass a test and then it replaces itself. Skill cards are powerful cards um, but they also, uh, most of them do something, right? These ones don't do anything. And then replace themselves is really good. And that's why Unexpected Courage is a little bit awkward because it doesn't replace itself, but it makes up for that for versatility. And there are reasons to run one over the other. That Unexpected Courage, if your stat line is pretty flat, like Stella, I think Unexpected Courage works really well there. That's fair. All right. Next one we got here. This one's a little bit wild. So we got Janae Beauregard, the Intrepid Explorer. She's a five cost, three experience ally from the Seeker and Rogue class. Soaks for two and two. These two actually look very similar. Lola Santiago, Santiago on the other side is three money and three experience. They both give you plus one book and plus one foot. Janae Beauregard is during your turn after you move to location, exhaust Janae Beauregard to move a clue or a non-elite enemy from a connecting location to your location or vice versa. Lola Santiago, you can exhaust her and spend X resources and discover one clue at your location where X is the shroud value of your location. So you can buy clues off of your location. So these two, um, I'm going to say, like, right now, these two are strong allies. These mm -hmm. are both very strong cards. But looking at this right now, which one do you think is, like, stronger and why? I like Lola Santiago better. I like Lola Santiago better because she doesn't have an after you move to a location trigger, mm -hmm. which I think is great. Um, and she focuses on what you are doing right there, mm -hmm. right then for a free action. Mm -hmm. So I really like Lola Santiago as well because um, I, if I remember correctly, the rogues class gets a lot of resources. They do. Yeah, they're the money class. So the ability to just hoover up clovers even yeah. if you're not necessarily a clue build like mm -hmm. the fact that this can turn your money build into a clue build i think is really strong and i also think um she's a little cheaper which mm -hmm. i kind she of like cheaper, as well yes. yeah um that's it i can see a good use for uh genie 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 that's what we call her anyway okay well i can see a good use for genie but with genie um it's great that she turns move into something beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I feel like based on the game I've played so far, mm -hmm. there's a lot of times where you move into an area and there are no connecting clues. Mm -hmm. There is nothing you would move with her power mm -hmm. into a space. Yeah. Uh, so this is like, this one is it's a little bit tricky because... Mm -hmm. Uh, Lola, they're both great. Yeah. Um, but Janae actually, uh, she can break the game. Like wow. she can like she can break the game in such an action positive way for players. She was recently tabooed to cost five experience, right? Um, so the big thing I think here's an example, okay, mm -hmm. of the scenario we just played. Slight minor spoilers for Undimension and Unseen. Say for example, you wanted to attack your guy or get another evade against the brood. You move into a location. He's at a connecting location. You bring the guy to you. 
you now basically got an action to do what you want to do. Another situation, you're moving into a location with an enemy. You don't want to fight that enemy. You kick that enemy to another location. Go even deeper. Remember that one location that was like clues can only be discovered by investigating for Shroud. Move out of that location, bring the clue with you to your new location that might also have two Shroud, which means you can pick up an additional clue with your things that get additional clues. Yeah, she gets to basically avoid location effects. If yeah, she, wants she, to. she basically just turns the game off in ways, right? Like you can basically just shut down. Like also, like a great thing to do is on three player when there's like a like, or even just like there's a victory location with like five shroud. You get one of the clues and you bring the other one with you to another location, one that you might not even need to investigate, right? It's one of the, it's a small thing because Lola's is a very good ability. Lola is probably my most played green ally because oh, she's nice. just very good. She also works really well with flashlight because the shroud gets lowered and you can just buy <laughs> clues for cheap. It's very fun. But it's it's like just interesting the difference between just that little bit of being able to move things around is a very powerful effect. That makes sense. But actually. I think there was no wrong answers here because like they're both great. Um, but it's that little thing that like a new player might not see what you can do with Janae that really makes her powerful. That, no, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Next one we got here. All right. So this is a, this is gonna be this is this is a fun one. So we got Devil's Luck. This is a one cost survivor event. It's fast. Play when you are dealt damage and or horror. Cancel up to 10 damage and or horror just dealt to you. Then exile Devil's Luck. We had, then I've had worse. This is a zero cost, four experience um, guardian event. Fast. Play when you are dealt damage and or horror. Cancel up to five damage and or horror just dealt to you. Then gain that many resources. So what do you think about these cards? I like I've had worse better. <laughs> um, it doesn't cancel as much damage, but it gains you back resources. <laughs> Um, I don't know how often it is that you would take up to 10 damage and or horror. I don't know in the game how much that is. I've noticed a lot of fours and a lot of fives uh, as kind of the big end of Dunwich. I don't know if that's true going forward in the game. I like that it has better symbols. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if, you draw, symbols, yeah. if you draw the card and you need it just to actually pass a test, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, I also like that it gains that many resources. Yeah. Now it is for experience, so that sucks. Yeah, it is a lot of experience. But it is also free to play. Yes, yep. So that's nice. If, if you have any sort of recursion in your deck that you can do, I would. I could also see myself running this card and then bringing it back into my hand. I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, I actually don't know either. There might be something you can do with it, with spirits. I'm not too sure, though. But I do like Devil's Luck as well, mm -hmm. and I have considered running it in my Stella deck, yeah. only to decide it doesn't really fit her tempo. So, Devil's Luck is a bit weird, where you're never taking that much damage or horror. Yeah. The only exception is in Dunwich, where there's the card where if your deck cycles, you take 10 damage. Right? Yeah. That's the only exception. However, with I've Had Worse, you also never really take 5 damage. Right? It's a little bit strange. However, we're gonna, I'm going to go with like this kind of thing, is we're going to look at a level 2 I've Had Worse which is cancel up to two damage or horror just dealt to you gain that many resources. I think I like the two experience version better. <laughs> no. Ah, uh, I don't know. I kind of still like the four better because mm -hmm. the four better feels better for those mind tests that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like for the two experience difference, I mean, that is a big, a big thing of experience, but that, that turns this I've had worse into... Um, oh, maybe the two is better. Cause just one, my problem is just one mind doesn't feel like it's a lot. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's contributing a lot. But two damage is more likely than you gain those two resources, so that's nice. What if I turn this on its head and I I asked, what if you would look at these as economy cards mm. as opposed to damage prevention? Then I probably want the five resources. But how likely, so then we go yeah, with that again, true. like how likely yeah. are you to take... You're like, probably never going to. Right? So like it's the difference between paying, like I think the most common number you'll take in a worst case scenario is three. Yeah. Right? But most commonly you're taking two, right? Yeah, so, so then probably I have the two experience. Yeah, because then for worst. two less experience, you're getting the same amount of resources. You're going to get like one less resource on average, 
but it's going to like trigger all the time. You could also run two of them. Yeah, very, yeah, for the cost of one. You could run two, get yeah. to four, and yeah. then also only have it for the two, so you're splitting it up. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I think yeah. the I think the two experience one is better. Yeah, because the, the thing about the, uh, the devils, like with these two cards, you look at the thing as like, oh, I'm going to prevent damage, mm -hmm. right? And then you look at these ones, but like the idea for these cards is less about preventing damage and more about, hey, this is economy. Yeah. So say, for example, you have an enemy that deals you one and one. You think, hey, I'm going to draw a card or play an asset, but also get two resources out of it. Yeah, right? And then I'm going to kill the guy. That's right? true. Yeah. So like that's like kind of like the weird thing that it happens with these cards and damage prevention. Mm -hmm. And we have actually a whole video on healing. Healing is such an interesting part of Arkham Horror, the card game. And uh, so that's going to be a future one that we're going to do. Because this is not healing. This is damage prevention. It's not even damage prevention. This is economy. It's a weird card here. Interesting. All right. These ones are uh, two that you've actually, you've actually played. These. You've played it. So lucky. One cost event. Fast. Play when you fail a skill test. Get plus two your skill value for that test. Live and learn. Fast. Play after a skill test you failed ends. Attempt that test again. You get plus two skill value for this test. I like live and burn, learn better. Mm -hmm. I like live and learn better on every possible combination. I realize that lucky helps you... Mm -hmm. um, when you would fail a skill test, mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to drop that and be like, okay, I'm not failing it. That's fine. Um, because then you don't have to resolve the effects from the failed test. Mm -hmm. I get that. But for zero dollars, the question mark, mm -hmm. and for the fact that you get to test again, which mm -hmm. I realize is especially good with Stella, but mm -hmm. then there's also anybody can run that survivor or a combo that you suggested for me. Yes, the quick learners. The quick learners. Then that still could potentially be a lot of value for you. Mm -hmm. I think Lucky has a place. I think Lucky has a place in decks that don't want to fail, but I have been a Adoring live and learn. So this one is a little bit interesting because Stella has skewed you to live and learn a bit more. Yeah. Um, however, it's actually the opposite of what you say. Lucky is the staple, and live and learn is more for the decks uh, that want it. Interesting. Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, and it's mostly just because with Stella, she has the bonus where if she fails, she gets to do more. Yeah. But they're actually like I think a huge piece of the survivor color pie because they're I think they're both great cards, right? But they do different things, mm -hmm. right? Lucky helps you pass a test which is better than failing a test. It's true. However, if you want to fail a test and maybe play, uh, I don't know, a look what I found. Yeah. That's where live and learn gets really good. However, just because you have um, look what I found in your deck doesn't mean you're going to play live and learn, right? It's That's a little true. bit strange. Um, but however, if you're lucky, can fit in like every survivor deck. Anyone that can play red will probably win more if they're playing luckies. Oh no, I don't yeah. have any. And it's because the card is just like, being able to fail a test, or pass a test that you would fail, basically just like gives you an action back. Yeah, right? that's true, that's true. Um, however, Live and Learn does have a huge place in decks that want to fail. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really good in Stella. I'll also play it in decks that care about succeeding because it gives you plus two. Mm -hmm. So for example, there is um, Rita Young. She likes evading, right? And if she evades, she gets to do things. And sometimes the you'll run both. You'll run live and learn and this. And then she also, like, uh, investigators as well that also can access green cards. Like, an example of this is not pressed. Wendy Adams is a good example. She can play some green cards that, like, care about how much you succeed by. And if you fail, you can go again and get an additional plus two for it, where yeah. Lucky doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things where Lucky is just, like, always good. Because That's you funny. always want to pass a test, right? Um, and Live and Learn is there for, I want to fail, but I still want to pass. But, like, they're the same piece of the red color pie. They just do things in different ways. Because, like, Live and Learn is kind of like Lucky. It's just you also have to fail. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Yeah, no, Lucky's a good, like, there's, uh, and Lucky, there's a level three version where it gives you plus three and it's zero, and you can use it on other investigators, and the card's just, like, one of the strongest in the game. Oh, shit, I'm because, gonna have like, to plus, save up for that. Because, like, plus three on a test is just very good. Yeah, as well as, and if it's zero. Yes. Well, actually, this, so this is interesting. One actually is not, it doesn't, in my mind, in my game theory for Arkham, one actually means zero, which is strange. One equals zero. Because if it's a reactionary card, you get one money at the end of each turn. And where do you most want to react? In the mythos phase. So it's basically always there. It's not actually zero, but a one on a reactionary card is essentially a free card. Interesting, yeah. yeah it's not, but it kind of is. Mm -hmm. it kind of, in my mind, anyway. Yeah, but it's not. I'm not saying one equals zero, but it's easier to always be on as a reactionary card. There's a card called Ward of Protection that costs one, and it cancels a card from the, mytho from the deck. 
it also is like always online. Yeah. Okay. Spells. We haven't really talked about spells. We haven't really. So these both take up your spell slot. You got two of them. Shriveling and Azure Flame. They each cost three. They each have four charges. Uh, spend a charge to fight, and it uses your brain instead of your fist and deals plus one damage. All fine, so same between them. But they each have a different trigger. So shriveling is if a skull, cultist, tablet, squid, or auto fails revealed during an attack, take one horror. Azure Flame. If an elder sign, plus one or zero, is revealed during this attack, you take one damage. So I'll say, just at the front, both of these are playable cards. Mm -hmm. They're both, they both do the exact same thing. And one is not necessarily better than the other. But why would you maybe want to look at running one over the other? Well, I know that the purple people have <laughs> more brain mm -hmm. than health. Mm -hmm. So you lean potentially towards shriveling, especially mm -hmm. if you've got cards where the more horror you take, the more benefits you get. Mm -hmm. I imagine there's some trick that they can use to turn horror into benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Agnes Baker, whenever she takes horror, she deals a damage. She's yeah. an example, yeah. She'd be great with shriveling. Yeah. But I think unless I had that specifically, I would go with Azure Flame. Mm -hmm. Because in my experience, I've drawn more skulls, cultists, necklaces, uh, weird bird hearts, and tentacles uh, than I have elder signs, plus ones, or zeros. Mm -hmm. And in my general experience, um, Azur Flame would probably statistically for me pop off more effectively unless I was building into taking the horror. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of like a big thing about this is like what you can take more of. Yeah. And this one's also kind of funny because you usually end up running both in your deck anyway. I'm not right? surprised. Uh, because you kind of just need to find a spell to deal damage if you're doing that. However, if you're only choosing, like if you only have two slots for a damage spell, you look at what you have more of. Yeah. If you have more horror, you're going to want to grab Shivley. If you have more reserve flame, you're going to grab, you know, if you have more health, you're going to grab reserve flame. However, they, they have the weirdest thing where you always draw more of the token depending on the spell you're using. So if you're playing Azure Flame, you're going to draw more plus ones and zeros. It just happens. Well, then I'm trading hit points it to just, win, so I'm happens. okay. But I mean, like, that's actually a fair point, right? Like, is worth it, like, would you rather take a horror and fail or a damage and pass, yeah. right? And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, it depends on, you're also how much um, horror soak you have, how much healing you have, how much damage healing you have, how much damage soak you have. There's really, like, no wrong answer. Um, it's just kind of like depending on... I generally play Shriveling more. Interesting. Just because most Mystics generally have more horror. And that's like the only that reason. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Just because you don't like hands, but you like dissolving faces. Yeah. So this one's actually fun. I actually have both of these in my mark deck. You I know see me play cards. both these guns. So we have the 45 automatic. Four cost, spend one ammo, fight. It has four ammo. You get plus one fist and for this attack and deals plus one damage. Takes up one hand slot. The 32 Colt is three cost, so one less, takes up a hand slot with two more ammo, deals plus one damage, but you don't get a fist boost. When Which one are you drawn to more, and which one would you, like, why would you run it over the other? I would prefer the 45 automatic, mm -hmm. because it does give the one fist boost and deals the plus one damage, mm -hmm. even though it's lower ammo. But I would absolutely run both of these, mm -hmm. because the Colt is nice uh, the way I see it. The Colt sits there for six ammo. It is your backup gun. Mm -hmm. You have it ready when you need it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's good for the extra damage when you're already up. So I agree with the general sentiment that the 45 automatic is just the one that you put in first. Mm -hmm. However, with a 32 Colt, the not, like, I think this is one kind of swayed by you watching me play Mark, who has yeah. five fist. If you have four, the 32 Colt is, like, poopy. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like it does nothing. So I wouldn't even run it as my backup weapon. Mm -hmm. I'd rather run, like just another bigger gun or a melee weapon. Or another then, 45 automatic. Yeah, I'd run yeah, two of those. And actually, because in my Mark deck, it's a little bit weird. I have two of the Thompson, two of the Colts, but only one of the automatic, which is strange. But the big for that is that my 32 Colt plan is like, it's going further from it. So like, if you're going to play the 32 Colt, you need to be able to build around it. With the 45 automatic, you can just always, it's like old reliable, yeah. you know? Gives you plus one, deals plus one damage. However, even though like, um, 
if you were building a guardian deck, unless you had five fist, I wouldn't even look at the 32 card. Interesting, is, okay. Because the, the no giving the boost is a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you see an enemy and you're like, this guy has four and you're like, I'm attacking at four, you know? Yeah. Like that's that. And so, and then you look at it like, okay, I can come in and overpower and unexpected courage looking earlier with a 45, I'm now at seven, I'm up three. With the 32 Colt, I'm only up two, which is good on standard, but not a guarantee. Not as much of a guarantee as the 45 automatic is. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right. This one's a little cheeky. This one's a little cheeky. So I mean, because I've been doing so well so far. I think you. No, I think you have. I think you have. But this one, this one is. Uh, the, this one is like uh, the. Uh, I suppose I'm going to describe this one as an extra credit answer. Oh, okay? nice. So this one's a Eureka, the innate. It commits for a while. Uh, sorry, a brain, a foot. And a book, as Bray almost calls it, the almost wild. Uh, if this skill test is successful, the investigator performing this test searches the top three cards of his or her deck for a card and draws it and shuffles the deck. Then we got plan of action, which commits for a wild. If it's during or before your first action of your turn, it gains brain foot. If it's during your, if it's between your first and third actions, you draw a card if it succeeds. If it's in your third or after your third, it gets fist book. So what do you think of these ones? I like Plan of Action mm -hmm. a lot. I realize Eureka is good. It's it's almost wild. And getting to choose which of the three cards you want and then put them in and then shuffle your deck, that's all great. But I really like Plan of Action. Mm -hmm. And this might be just because I am not... I, I am a player who likes to do weird tricks. Yeah. But I love the fact that with this card, I can look at the situation that I'm in and I can go... Um, what do I want? What do mm -hmm. I want from this card? How can I sequence it best? Yeah. 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 Uh, do I want? Do I? Do I need to survive a uh, brain mm -hmm. damage test from yeah. the deck? Well, I've got two brain right here. Actually, a funny thing. It's the, there's going to be a lot of these rules as we come up. More. I hate this. Uh, it, the mythos phase is not during or before your first action. Take this card. But it's we, terrible. But we always say that we think that was a mistake. Yeah. We think that like we we my guess is that was not the intention of the card. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. okay. But it doesn't actually rules as written work that way. That's yeah. trash. This card. But I mean, like better. we did the exact same. We went through the exact same thing you did until someone pointed it out. So you're you're actually on like that's a very normal and I think sane and just like logical uh, assumption to have about the card. I do like that fist and book come at the end because to me you're usually doing a fight at yeah. the end or yeah. a book as your final action that that makes sense uh, and then I do also like the fact that it draws one card In I could middle, see yeah. I could see a reason to play either of them I really could yeah but I like plan of action better even though I'm real sad about that brain effect yeah. so I um I always run Eureka and everything, but it's kind of like personal preference. This one is not about more so about like what card's better. Mm -hmm. This is the extra credit. And unfortunately, Eric, I can't give you the marks because this one I'm here. To, this one I said it's kind of a cheeky, but let's look at the middle of the card mm -hmm. of innate versus practice. So we, we haven't actually ever talked about Ooh. traits, but traits actually do matter a lot when you're looking at cards. Mm -hmm. This actually goes back to uh, the opening, the, the four skills. Overpower and um, perception are practiced skills. And there are cards that care about skills. So for example, here's one practice makes perfect. <laughs> I yeah. hate that this was preset. <laughs> I hate it. All right, so this is a one cost event during a skill test of your location. You search the top nine cards of your deck for a practice skill and commit it to a skill test. You shall, and then if it's successful, you add it to your hand instead of discarding it. Skill cards get good when you can use them multiple times. So what you should always be doing is looking at skills, uh, looking at, sorry, looking at traits of cards and wondering, is there maybe a reason I'd want to play this over that in this deck? So for example, if you're playing a practice makes perfect deck and you're looking for two more skills, while Eureka is just generally probably just a better card in most decks, if you're playing a deck that cares about practice skills, plan of action will go in all the time. So this is like that one I said, like this is like the extra credit of the next level of like, um, this one took even me a while. It wasn't until there was a card that allows you to play insights from discard piles where Bryn was like, hey, we should all, uh, now every card I look at the traits because traits actually do matter a lot for stuff like this. That makes sense. Yeah. So like a practice skill, Travis makes, plays a lot of practice makes perfect. Um, I love it too. Yeah. I yeah. just want to be the woman in that picture. Well, she's, she's going to be coming out in a future expansion. That's Kate oh, Winthrop. Oh, yeah. yes. But yeah, no. So like, it's it's more like, I don't like, it's one of the, the card, the skill cards. It's a lot of preference. Also like what you want. 
but it's the idea of looking at traits where things get a little bit spicy. I also purposely did not read the traits out loud. I love when it. I was doing, I was reading I love the cards. It. Yeah. I think this is our last one, maybe. So this one's very interesting. All right. So this is two try and try agains. Uh, you actually did play one of these. I did. Uh, but then we sided out because it did not do what you wanted. We replaced it with the Grizzly Totem 3 because that did do what you wanted. That's what I was hoping for. So, uh, try, try again, the level 1 version. Uses three tries. If it has no tries, discard it. After a skill test has failed, if the skill card you own is convinced that test, exhaust, try, and try again, and spend a try. Return it to your hand. The level 3 version just has that text with no tries on it. Which one do you think you would want to play more. I want to play try and try again with the three experience. Mm -hmm. No question. Um, I like that it doesn't have the three uses. It doesn't mm -hmm. take up a slot as far as I can tell. Neither of them do. Yeah, neither yeah, of them so do. Yeah, so I'm not worried about this card sitting out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, filling up a hand size or anything like that. It's got two brain, which I, again, mm -hmm. I've officially fallen in love with two brains or more. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I want the three experience. I think I literally skip so do you want to know what's wild? I'm angry. <laughs> I'm angry again. Why? <laughs> Why so have you level, made this game? So the level three version is actually kind of a mistake to put into your deck. Over the level one. Isn't that wild? And do you want to know why that is? Why? Uh, I mean, I think, once again, you're kind of skewed by Stella here. Yes. But the big thing is, like, why do you want to fail more than three times? Right? Like, you should be asking yourself when you're playing... Why am I committing cards to test I'm going to fail more than three times in the game, right? So it's like one of those things where, like, it's you don't need to use it more than three times. If you need to use it more than three times, you're actually probably just going to lose, right? Yes. Which is wild. It's wild, isn't it? It, it makes angry. no sense, right? It makes no sense. <laughs> but, like, it is kind of just how it goes, right? And because also, if you say, for example, you use the level three version three times, mm -hmm. you did it, right? But then you pay two more experience than you would have for the level one version, right? I hate this. Yes, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. I'm angry. It's so strange, though, isn't it? That's just like that's why are, how things. Why aren't all cards <laughs> running like Stella? Yeah. Come on. So it's it's one of those weird things, and also Grizzly Totem is just outright better as yeah. well. Um, but it, it is it goes from like card that is like good in the right deck to mistake, which is such a weird thing. I'm angry because at the beginning of this, I thought to myself, Justin is going to have made one fatal logic flaw, <laughs> which is aside from maybe one of the cards, he's going to put all the good ones on the left yeah. hand side because he thinks in English <laughs> and all the bad ones on the right hand side. And I have been correct on that assertion and still gotten everyone wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, yeah, for the ones that have been better, yeah, I mean, like, it's been... It's been you put them all on the left-hand side, except for Unexpected, which you told me they were all good, yeah. but I still failed. Yeah. In my brain, I was like, I can game the system, and yeah. then I For the ones failed. that, yeah, the ones that actually ended up did being one is better than the other, because that, there was a few of them, yeah. Yeah, oh. no, but this one is, this one's strange. Like, this one, it was, like, even, um... This one, Travis and Bryn also had to teach me this one as well. That makes sense. Because Travis was like, this one's bad, because why do you want to fail more than three times, right? And I guess, yeah, watching the way that you play Mark Harrigan, everything is about being up three, up yes. four. You, if you are failing and you are losing a card committing, then mm -hmm. things are bad. You're not yeah. spending three... Exp you're spending that three experience to make sure you don't fail in the first place. Yeah, and also, like, experience is a valuable resource. It's going to become more, less... I mean, not less valuable, but we're going to get more as we play further campaigns. Dunwich is very tight on XP, but each campaign after this gets a lot juicier with XP. That's great, because I'm already willy-nilly spending it. Like, it doesn't <laughs> matter to me, so... I mean, this is the best part. Like, when you first start, and you're just looking through the binder, and you're like, yes, 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 yes. yes. And I'm just like, you know? 5 XP, I'm gonna buy that man in red. Yeah. Why not? And I mean, like, that's why I'm not trying to, like, look over your shoulder while you're leveling up, because no one was looking over my shoulder. And it just takes, you just gotta, like, try cards out, right? Yeah. And that's what's most fun. I think that was the last card. It wasn't. <gasps> I fucking lied to you. I fucking lied to everyone. Well, then I know lockpick is better, because <laughs> it's on the left-hand side. All right. So, we got lockpicks and thieves' kit. These Let's are two it. rogue cards. They both take up a hand slot. Mm -hmm. Lockpicks is one experience. And it has, if it has no supplies, discard it. As an action, exhaust lockpicks, investigate. Add your foot to your skill value for this investigation. If you do not succeed by at least two, 
remove a supply from lockpicks. Then we got Thieves' Kit. Uses six supplies. They're both item tools and illicit, so the traits don't matter here. They're the same stuff there. As an action, spend one supply, investigate. You may use foot instead of book for this investigation. If you succeed, gain one resource. So I'm going to say right now, neither of these cards is 100% better than the other. They yeah. both have their homes. But what do you think those homes are? Well, I think Thieves' Kit goes anywhere where you have better foot than book. Easy, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's also money. Yes, yeah. Which is great. Yeah. But it is one supply for the one resource. So it's only if you succeed. Mm -hmm. I also don't like that it doesn't discard itself. Yeah. That is something I don't like. I think lockpicks is better because I love the add your foot value yeah. for this investigation. So the fact, so it proves my point that the best one's on the left hand side. But more importantly, like if I'm, I, I take this if I have three and three. Mm -hmm. I take this if I have two and two. If I have four and four, I take lockpicks. Mm -hmm. That's gold. That's eight. Eight, yep. Eight. And if I do not succeed by at least two, remove one supply from lockpicks. So the better both of your values are, the higher both of your values are, the longer you can run lockpicks yep. and just keep cranking out that value. Yeah. Uh, some things to be aware of. Yes. Um, I mean, like, when we look at, like, Lola, Santiago, and Janae, obviously go great with lockpicks, right? Yeah. Because you get an extra plus two. You get an unexpected courage on. That's whenever we call it plus two, we call it an unexpected courage because <laughs> it is, right? Um, however, things to be aware of as you look at this about, like, where would I want to put this in my deck, you only get one lockpicks a turn. It does exhaust. That is true. Thieves Kit, you can use multiple times a turn, right? Um, however, you're 100% right where, like, the you're going to more likely pass the tests with lockpicks because you get to add your skill values together. Yeah. Generally, if unless I have seven, I'm shaky. I'm not going to run lockpicks unless it adds up to eight, right? Yeah. Uh, seven, I'm pretty shaky on, which I actually have been doing in a Bob deck, but Bob is a little bit illegal. Um, <laughs> but I also, I've been actually playing a lot of Thieves' Kit lately. Thieves' Kit's very new. It just came out. It's the newest expansion. Um, we, sh we sh you should never underestimate as a player things that give you stuff back for doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and you even said, the resource for it is really nice, but you need to succeed to get that resource, right? And it's a replace of a skill, which yeah. is not bad. I can see I can see a lot of, I don't know a lot of green cards, but if anybody has five foot... Yeah, it's it's great. I'm yeah. like... Because oh, yeah, then also what it also does is it opens up you being able to use skills that commit for foot on this, which have really nice effects, mm -hmm. right? Um, what if I told you there was a level zero lock picks that had no supplies, but if you did not succeed by at least two, you discarded it. I don't like that card. Mm -hmm. I don't like that card. I'm paying three money for something that's only going to possibly activate once. Mm -hmm. And if I fail, I've paid three, res three resources to do nothing. Yeah, I think that's a very fair... Um, the... When I saw Thieves Kit Zero, I was like, oh, good, now I don't need to play Lockpick Zero. Um, there's also an upgraded Thieves Kit that um, it gives you two resources if you succeed by two instead oh, of one. Oh, that I would run. So, like, it, it really, like, these two, it, it's a lot about the deck. So, if you're, like, a big money deck, I like Thieves Kit 3. Yeah. Oh, I like three, the upgraded Thieves Kit and also the level zero Thieves Kit. If you are caring ever about how much you succeed a skill test by, Locks Picks shoots up in value. Yeah. If you're a big money deck, Thieves Kit also is going to, you know, like, sit for there as well. Uh, as you said, if you're using your foot, I think both of them have a great home. Generally, in a vacuum, Lockpicks is better. So, yes, your left side does continue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it would be funny if I actually just did them in alphabetical order each time. Oh, that would be that so way. funny. Did it actually go that way? No, not already at the start. Janae? Yeah. Devil's Luck. Oh, no, I lied. Yeah, I've had worse. Lucky and live. No, that yeah. one's not. Shriveling and not now. No, that would have been funny, though, if they were in alphabetical order. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, these cards are like, they're, they're, they both have homes and it really just depends on the deck. And that's like where, like why this game is so fun is that the gameplay loop is really good. Yeah. But the amount of depth that you have as a player over what you want to include and why is incredibly deep. Like it's incredible. This game is not shallow at all with deck building. No, no. There's at all. also um, someone, uh, it's uh, one of our 
uh, one of our Discord users, Nick, put out a deck that, told, that mentioned a deck idea that's really fun with Thieves Kit. There's a card called Sleight of Hand, where you put an asset that takes up one hand slot into play, and then at the end of your turn, you bring it back. And you just take a bunch of actions, use the Thieves Kit, and then like get some money, and then it goes back into your hand, and you just do it again in the future. Doesn't that's that sound really fun? That's really funny. That, that is really fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And also, thank you for showing me Devil's Fortune because that broke my the Devil's Luck. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My thought that it was all on the left hand side. That was true. And honestly, actually, when I because these changed, I actually was being aware of that when I was making it. But then the the structure changed because I got so many good suggestions, and then I made one entirely about healing because healing is. Um, there's a lot to discover about healing in this game. And it was so bad for so long, but to understand why it's bad is, I think, a big hurdle for new players to get over. But then it got good, so now healing's good. Is it too good? That's what we always joke about. We're gonna make a clickbait video that says, like, healing too good in Arkham War, the card game? Yeah. Uh, but no, this was fun. I, I, yeah. I also like talking about it for myself, but, oh my God, this guy. Um, no, I think that was uh, the only, uh, I think you did very well, except for the extra credit question. But that's okay. That was there to trump you. That was there to to win. I wanted to, like, ha, Eric wasn't paying attention to traits. I never even mentioned why traits are important at all. <laughs> I, I love it because every time we talk about these things, I realize how much, like, I, I went from soft middle yeah. to beginner again. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. I'm like, there's so much more I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, because you played one of like 40 plus investigators too. And they all play differently. I might as well be an expert. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I mean, like in all fairness to a lot of this was kind of skewed by Stella. Stella does change the evaluation on a lot of things. Because like, especially like the try, try again, because you like failing. You're like, yay, I failed. Yeah. Not so much with other investigators because your actions are much more important because you don't get a bonus one if you fail. Listen, when you play the best meta, yeah. you don't need to play anything no, else. No, exactly. To know I mean, the game. It's so funny if you actually just only play Stella from here on out. <laughs> I, I, everyone's very curious about what class is your is going to end up your favorites. So oh, I'm very too. curious about that as well because um, Travis, Burn, and I all have different combinations. So it's it's very fun, and I'm excited to see what yours are because yeah, mine's going to be neutral. Yeah, I mean, there's people who love the neutral investigators. There's neutral investigators. Yeah, Lola and Charlie Kane. I need, I need to process that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, huge thank you for your support on all the Eric episodes. You guys love Eric. I love Eric too, and we're gonna keep making them because it's, it's a blast. It's a blast. Eric loves all of you. Mm -hmm. Bye.